So I purposely found my most gayest shirt. <laughs> For this video and I also did my eyes pansexual flag colored it's not the right order but I still cried this was going to be a makeup tutorial not makeup tutorial but a makeup application while I spoke about the stuff that I wanted to speak about on my channel today but I decided against that because I wanted to really concentrate on what I was saying. And I don't know how many of you guys have tried doing makeup while making a video or just like doing makeup while like concentrating on something else. It's just quite hard. And I wanted to make sure everything came across correctly. I have to kind of like be careful about, I mean, with everything on the internet now, you kind of have to make sure you're like, you know, being inclusive and you're not saying the wrong things and, and incorrect definitions and all of that. This is purely going to be a very kind of personal chat about my own experience, my own journey, I suppose, my own thoughts, wrapping my head around my own sexuality and what sexuality means to me. And I think that's important to say because particularly when it comes to pansexuality, it's quite difficult in my opinion, because a lot, a lot of pansexuality is quite ir ironically against labels and boxes, not against, but like it, it's not based around those things. So it does make it difficult to try and like summarize it. But I didn't want that to stop me from talking today because I felt also that pansexuality isn't really spoken much about and I mean it is now but like 10 years ago nothing I love that feeling you get when like it's mentioned in like a tv show or a film and you're like we represent I guess when when you um feel part of something it's like a really cool feeling to discover other people who get that which maybe this video will do for some people maybe someone will stumble across this and be like oh my god didn't know that was a thing or oh my god like yay we can bond over this together obviously this isn't completely out of the blue it is also pride month and we are coming out of pride month cry cry but i didn't want to miss this opportunity i nearly missed it i was like oh my god ellie we're getting closer and closer it's my birthday in like two days time <laughs> that felt really irrelevant <laughs> It's cool to have a birthday in Pride Month. I don't know why. It's always kind of felt a bit satisfying and the fact it's at the end as well. So it's like a it's a nice like way to make it feel less stressful leaving June. But the interesting thing about, well, what I find interesting, <laughs> I hate to sound big headed here, about my own self-discovery is the fact that so much of it is caught on camera and is documented on this channel. I, at the end of the day, have grown up on the internet and I have said some things as a kid that maybe I wouldn't have said, well, I wouldn't say now, and maybe not as informative or as I wanted them to come across. <laughs> things that generally we all kind of grow up saying things incorrectly, but we don't document our words typically for it to be up forever. Whereas me, it's a little bit different because I, I do, but obviously I choose to put the things out there that I want to put out, of course, it's not against my will. But it does sometimes bite me in the bum because, you know, I'm still learning things, I'm still wrapping my head around things. And my probably first kind of steps into even understanding or even knowing what the hell pansexual, pe <laughs> pansexuality was, was from literally just thinking out loud about my own thoughts when it came to pride. I've, I've made videos on, on my channel before over Pride Month discussing my own experience with very close family members, their coming out stories and what I went through in like a secondhand sort of experience, like what I watched very close people to me go through and how I watched that affect my family and how much like support and love, encouragement I have for people who just want to live their damn truth. And in midst of all those discussions, every now and again, I would kind of state my own piece and I would say things like, you know, I can't, I can't wait for the day that we don't need to come out. I, I've always said like, it will be so good when we finally get to a day where we have kids and we're not instantly uh, expecting their life to be this like typical way that we were brought up being told that is the way we're supposed to be. For example, heterosexual relationships. That's not me being mad at the fact that we have kids and, and expect that is more likely. It's just the, the, I was just, you know, saying things like that, like it would be nice when we don't have to come out. It'll be nice when we will be told by our children that 
they're bringing their partner home that that day to meet the parents and we don't know what is going to walk through the door <laughs> we we don't have like expectations you know and then it kind of escalated to me being like i don't feel like i want labels i didn't see the point in labels i thought it would be really nice to experience a time where we don't put lesbians in boxes over here and then bisexuals in boxes over here like i didn't really understand what the importance of that was and some people some people didn't take that very well like there was backlash from those videos i made because people were like ellie labels are so important and I, there was obviously some people trying to educate me about that but then there were other people saying like you are being very rude by having these thoughts <laughs> and I, I i um it kind of scared me away from making content to do anything like that because i didn't really felt feel like it was my place to say you know if i was someone who didn't feel that labels were needed then i shouldn't be talking about labels <laughs> such as gay lesbian bisexual and it just kind of made me think okay it's not my place so I'll, I'll kind of leave it and then my kind of uh approach towards those kinds of topics changed in anything that i ever brought up to do with gay pride or just anything that i wanted to show my support for in the lgbtq plus community would be from a, a standpoint of someone who just was proud of everyone for coming forward you know i wanted to be inclusive on the channel i wanted to make sure people felt they were comfortable here and they could you know talk about those things here they could come out on the freaking comment section if they really want to i would discuss how my sisters are like two of the closest people in my life and i would mention their stories and i would i mean i've actually discussed it with my sister at one point because i felt like maybe that was a better way to kind of have a conversation because in a sense i wanted people to accept what i was saying through bringing someone who would consider themselves lesbian like i felt like i couldn't do that if i didn't have like a place in the community i never really felt like i had a place does that make sense and i remember distinctively like one example was when i did a rainbow makeup look on my face a bit similar to what i've done today but like literally like loads of different colors all over my face i was dead proud of this video and i was so excited about this video because i was like oh my god you know could i could do so many more makeup looks similar to this and i felt like it had a really positive vibe and the intent was so like uplifting and encouraging and I just wanted people to feel like they had a place here on the channel and whew, one girl in particular I don't know whether she's she's watching this video if you are hello I remember she it was on Instagram specifically and she was not happy with it she was like you cannot be like market and was it market like profiting I wasn't even profiting um, you cannot use the community that you don't belong to to make money or like to create content or to use hashtags because i used hashtags like lgbtq plus and i used things that was linked to the photo because that's what you do when you're on instagram and her comment really stuck with me because well for many reasons one i was unsure about what she wanted like i felt like i was being silenced in a sense like i felt like i was being told what i could post and then also she was telling me i didn't have a place in the community as if she knew everything about me like she she was saying that i i've never struggled and i've never had hardships and that also was a, a third point like i felt that i could only speak up for other people and appreciate the community be a part of the community if i struggled to get there like if my parents were homophobic that meant i can then be a part of the crew like it felt very kind of i felt cornered and how can you from the outside know what the hell is going on in that person's life and in their head and their own journey and process people don't come out or even understand what they are until they're like 50 years old sometimes like everybody's process is so different and it was so interesting how at that point I made that tutorial I was probably around about 22 and this girl was like who do you think you are coming into this community it's it was very interesting I understand that she's probably you know she's gone through a lot it was quite shocking so it, it made me stand back again like every time I felt like I tr I'm trying to push for push forward I felt pushed back again but I mean like with most negative interactions online like that 
in the end I found out that she had beef with me for other reasons too to do with something to do with like a meetup when she met me somewhere apparently I wasn't very nice or something like that I'm such an overthinker when I meet people like I overthink everything I am so conscious of myself I cannot imagine me being a horrible person to someone that's just not in my nature but anyway off the point the point is it confused me even more like I didn't know what the hell I was doing or if I was even supposed to be doing anything really like should I just not even consider understanding where I stood and where I was at but that's not all of it like that's just a very small part the majority of people who watched my videos and heard what I had to say online oh, were so so kind and helpful in fact I don't know whether I would have stumbled across pansexuality without people who came forward after hearing what I said about labels and seeing through the fact that I was actually not trying to be an arsehole <laughs> and um, thought, hey, this is probably something that she's trying to describe here and was like, have you considered this? This sounds very similar to what you're saying. Rather than, you know, like understanding that I see things differently to you and then assuming that I'm trying to be an absolute uh, a-hole particularly in times like these when people are so quick to cancel each other and this whole cancel culture is getting on my absolute left tit it's hellish out there ladies and gentlemen <laughs> and i think we just kind of have to give each other the benefit of the doubt a lot of the time and understand that some stuff we have said but we didn't document was also toxic and we have come through our own process and journey and there are so many things that you would have got you would have gotten wrong and you might have said that wasn't the best now we're we're adults and we're watching this we know that kids will say things that aren't right could be considered you know rude or misinformed or uneducated like because they're they're kids and that's what you do you you, <laughs> you grow up you learn you develop you make mistakes you learn from them and you become a better person but this cancel culture doesn't allow that better person thing anymore it's like you just said this th one thing you did this one thing and i'm gonna make sure you know about it even if that person decides to improve afterwards it doesn't matter because they said it then and they will always be like that version that 2010 version of of themselves so it's like do you want them in to, to improve or not it's confusing it's baffling but it's kind of off the topic but the reason why i mention it is is i want people to also remember that themselves whether you put loads of stuff online or not it doesn't matter if everything you believe is changing all the time you don't have to be at like the exact point you feel comfortable in at any age you can still be discovering parts of yourself and you can still be a little unsure if that's specifically where you should be um especially if like i think a lot of you guys will be like 20 in your 20s watching this and i think that's the one thing that like stressed me out the most i was like too worried about where <laughs> i should be in set in stone and that wasn't the point that there's literally no point in rushing things to get a label to stick on you it doesn't really necessarily matter as long as you're not suppressing it down i think that's that's the main thing and the really interesting thing about labels is that rather ironically when i discovered a label that resonated with me it really opened my eyes to the value and importance of them from years of saying that i didn't want a world where labels were important and i didn't feel like there was importance in putting yourselves in boxes i suddenly ironically realized how validated and understood and valued and included um, and heard it felt to suddenly find yourself amongst a group of people that get your way of thinking does that make sense when you discover that your way of seeing people isn't the same as everyone else like i thought that it was the norm to see people's like energy and their vibe they give off and like their aura and fall in love with that over the fact that they are a guy or they are a girl i genuinely thought that was literally just what everybody did and that's no word of a lie and that is why 
labels were a little bit mind boggling to me because I was like, so you restrict yourself to like one type of person or like, what, like why should that matter to somebody? But then to, to be able to stick a kind of word that describes what you're saying, it's just, it's a bit like when you're trying to desperately find a, a word that means something when you're having a conversation with someone, you're like, oh, what's the word, what's the word? <laughs> and then they're finally like this and you're like, yes, that's it. It's just like really satisfying and comforting to know you're not on your own actually and people do feel that way because that's what pansexual is. That is basically the bottom line of it. It's falling in love with someone regardless of like anything to do with genitals, what they feel like or what they are. Like I've always uh, felt that I could feel people's energy better than others. And I don't know if that sounds a bit like hippie-ish, but that's how I essentially end up falling in love with people. Like what they give off and how I feel they are next to me, like <laughs> the energy of them in the room. That's the stuff that gets to me, right? And if I felt that about a woman and someone was like, well, she's a woman, or if, if they were transgender and someone came along and said, but you do realize they're transgender. Like that part doesn't hit any part in my brain that, you know, would filter that person away from me having feelings for them. Does that make sense? And a lot of people will say it's similar to bisexuality and a lot of people will misunderstand it as bisexuality and say there is no difference. But the truth is bisexuality never resonated with me in the same way as I saw it resonating with other people in my life who were coming out as bisexual. Like friends would say, I'm bisexual and they'd explain it and I'd be like, that's amazing, good for you. But it never, like the way they described their own stories never sat right. And I wanted it to, don't get me wrong, like, I, I'm not sat here saying, you know, it just wasn't good enough for me. I genuinely wanted just to have something like, oh, that makes sense for me. <laughs> um, people still do get the two very confused. And there are a few differences that I've gathered over time, but I won't necessarily know whether that is the full truth. And I've avoided looking it up to like, just repeat information that other people have said online because I want this to come from like my own feelings. And personally, why, the term bisexual didn't resonate with me is because so many lesbians and gays and bisexuals in my life were so focused on gender. Like that was a massive part of their um, label, I suppose. Like I would witness like lesbians, for example, praise women for like how beautiful they are. I mean, they are, I'm not saying they're not, but just put them on a pedestal and say wonderful things about them and then obviously heterosexual people will do the same with the opposite gender, like that would be a big deal to them. You know, the fact that maybe they are, I don't know, they've got a flatmate that's the opposite gender to them. People are like, oh, could that mean? Are you gonna potentially get together because it's a female and male living in the same space? Or I would even see bisexuals have like um, more preference to one side they would speak about like that i prefer men 80 percent more than i do women i'm not saying any of these things are wrong by the way that is the whole point of this video i'm saying like this was coming from my perspective of someone who was like but have you considered er anything else that's that's i guess as a kid i thought that meant that you can't be someone who doesn't consider those things so then naturally you would think do i like women but then the concept of saying, oh, I like women too, felt weird because I didn't necessarily like women as a whole. <laughs> the same with guys. Those things just felt less important to me than I feel like it does for others. That's all I'm trying to say. I'm making it sound a lot more complex than it probably is. And I mean, I keep using transgender as an example because I think that's a very typical one to explain to people who don't necessarily see the difference. A lot of bisexuals and a lot of heterosexual people and gay people actually will not date transgendered people. And that's exactly what I'm saying about gender. Like that comes into the equation for them. And that's an important thing to them. And that's absolutely fine. That is a preference. It's literally just your own personal desire. It doesn't mean you disres disrespect them or think any less of them. That's literally just something that 
means some means importance to you and another interesting thing which i think works against bisexuals quite a lot when you tell someone you are bisexual or you uh, come out is actually your current situation because a lot of bisexuals will come out dating someone of the opposite gender and therefore their identity doesn't look as suited to what they are expressing to someone as it would if I was to tell you I'm gay and I am dating a woman. It's almost as though people need that like proof and I've had this conversation with my sisters before and they agree. I feel like a lot of people find it easier to come out when they have found someone, when they're with someone because it's it's kind of easier. Like they feel as though you're validated more when you come out and you happen to be like demonstrating that form of sexuality you've come out as. I think people tend to just believe it more. I've known people who've come out as whatever and it's almost as though when they begin dating, people in their lives are like, oh yeah. Almost as though they forgot or they just push it to the back of their mind because it's not of relevance right now. It's not maybe important right now because it's not being demonstrated. Does that make sense? It's not validated when you're not showing acts of someone who is bisexual, right? With pansexuality, it doesn't matter who you're dating at that point in your life. If you're a male dating a female, or a female, female, male, male, transgender, blah, blah, blah. It literally doesn't matter because you are always seeing through the eyes of someone who is a pansexual at whoever it is you're considering dating. It's just a way you think and see people. When you're pansexual, you can date in a male-female relationship and you are still dating within your belief system. Does that make sense? Externally that is, to other people that is. Like the way of describing pan pansexuality to people, well, the way I do anyway, it's usually so close to me just describing to people how I see um, potential lovers. I just say to people, I don't take anything else into consideration to do with to, to do with gender it's it's literally if i have this like attraction or if i'm drawn to you that's all i consider your energy i guess <laughs> thinking like that and explaining it like that no power gets taken away from that when the person discovers that you are dating someone of the opposite gender still because they're not gonna ever know how i see that person no matter who or what you are dating as a pansexual you are always using those same approaches towards the situation and towards the relationship and the chemistry bisexuals i feel like it's sad because they don't get taken seriously unless they are you know showing that they feel that way which is lame and stupid and once again this is just coming from a place of my own heart and my own thoughts but to me pansexuality is more of a way of like seeing things <laughs> and also approaching how you gauge chemistry and your attractions a bit differently and i was talking with someone about this the other day and another thing i find really fascinating about the differences between coming out as a gay person and coming out as a pansexual the way you come out as a pansexual feels so so different and i can't tell whether it's just because pansexuals aren't taken as seriously so it's like easier to do maybe because it's not a big deal because people are just like okay i don't really get it so whatever i found the responses from people when you tell them about that sexuality very very interesting and i might have just been quite lucky but people often have the same response to me and it's usually something like wow that's so beautiful <laughs> And all I did was explain to them what pansexuality means. And it's not as though you come out as like bisexual or gay to your mum and she's like, wow, that's beautiful. Um, you know, it's not something that I've chosen to do. I'm, I don't do it because it sounds nice. It's <laughs> literally just the way I was born and saw things. But it's frustrating that, you know, people can't think that way just about every other sexuality because the way the conversation usually goes down is we i'll be talking about sexuality to people who i haven't actually like opened up to yet and i'll say oh like i guess i'm considered pansexual and they're usually like eh? and that in itself is a lot less frightening because it means i can have a chance to explain myself express myself what i really love about 
coming out to people about pansexuality is explaining it it's it, in a way it's really like empowering like i feel proud when i say it and i'm lucky and privileged in the fact i can be proud when i say it by the way because i have people around me that are understanding and lovely i'm interested in you guys actually if you're watching this and you've come out as a pansexual what people's responses were to your description of what that means to you and what the term pansexual is obviously you probably get the odd jokes of like oh does that mean you date pots and pans but like other than that what is it that people say to you because i've had i've just been lucky in people being like that sounds so lovely <laughs> and what what makes it even more funny is the fact i literally just thought this was the norm like i just thought that was what everyone else thought until you get to a certain age and then you realize people are putting labels on themselves i'm like oh so straight is like when you just see people of the opposite gender attractive. Okay, so am I in that box? Well, no, because why would I just find people of the opposite gender attractive? Because these people are also attractive. But I think, you know, before that person in that comment, whoever it was, I don't know, it, maybe one of you will even know it was you. The person who said to me, Ellie, I feel you may be pansexual. And actually I might even try and find that comment of that because that would be really cool. And um, the person who said that to me opened me up to like a world of understanding myself as a person a lot better and making me realize the importance of labels has also made me realize that it's okay to not be in that group. Because when you think the way you think is normal and average and typical, it almost makes you not understand how people can be so against someone for whatever they have between their legs you know i remember being like how can you just not want to date trans people it just was confusing to me and i almost had mistaken it for just being rude or like um, not including people and it's, it's like putting the plus on the end of lgbt <laughs> because I, I know how it feels to not feel like I should be having a say in the matter and, and how it feels to be pushed out of a community. You know, I went, I had been to Pride every year uh, without fail for, for so many years. All of a sudden, I felt like I shouldn't be like, and I get that it's easy to, to think that someone's taking something away from you. Taking away something like that from somebody else is not going to give you anything you're not going to gain anything from taking from other people you know especially when there's so much more focus that is needed in other areas you know i'm far from homophobic and i accept so many different walks of life and there are so many people who don't do that and we should be spending that energy and focus in those areas to educate and let people know like hey did you know that maybe you weren't aware what you're saying right now is not the best and is quite harmful i don't know anyway happy pride month everyone loads of love from my house to yours thank you very much for watching i'm on social media such as twitter facebook and instagram i have a what the frick I have social media such as Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. I'm on you now. I stream every now and again, even though I always forget. I have a Patreon account if you wanna support me on there. And last but not least, I have a tarot reading Facebook page if you wanna book a reading with me that's also down there. And speaking of uh, Patreon, a big old thank you to Aileen, Kelly, Lisa, what the frick is that on the bottom of my heart, on my mug? Lewis, Louise, Caesar, oh, Caesar. <laughs> Cesar, Stevo, Zara, and Tony.